Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to In Conversation with the Royal Butler. And once again, thank you for joining me. And I'm going to look here and say thank you to Shumba once again, who has also joined me. As with every other time, I thought he's not going to come in nice and quiet. And then suddenly he heard me uh, setting the camera up. And before I know it, here he is. So thank you again, Shumba, for joining me. And thank you to all of you for coming back for another in conversation with the Royal Butler. So from reading your comments, a lot of you would like me to talk about Camilla, the Duchess of Cornwall. This is actually quite a popular request and I thought it'd be quite fun to give you a bit of an insight as to what she's like as a person. And I mean, I was very lucky because I've obviously got to have known her from uh, almost from the beginning of my career with the Royal Household. And this is my opportunity to talk to all of you and give you my kind of share my memories of the Duchess with all of you. So basically, with the Duchess of Cornwall and myself, I've I've known her ever since day one, if you like, because when I had my interview with the Prince of Wales, which I've mentioned in a previous conversation. Um, when I went into the actual room to meet the Prince, the Duchess was also there. And some of you might remember that I actually bowed my head to the Duchess, but at that point she wasn't a royal, so I always thought that was probably quite a, quite a good thing to, to have done to show, um, obviously, respect. But I've even kind of said to some people, maybe I had an inkling, maybe I knew that one day she would marry the, the Prince. But from that moment, I felt very comfortable and, and relaxed, obviously around both of them but also with herself and what was really nice for me is for that especially for that kind of first couple of years was getting to know to know her before she actually became a member of the royal household now as with i mentioned with with prince william and kate middleton uh, the interesting part also was with the duchess i got to know her prior to the wedding of herself and the Prince of Wales. So it was it was quite, um, it, I suppose it's quite a good way to kind of get to know somebody before they're actually a member of the royal family, mm -hmm. if that makes sense, as, as Shumba agrees. Um, but I think, you know, it just gives you, um, I don't know, it's just, it kind of builds up a really good kind of working um, relationship as well with that person. I mean, the great thing was, the kind of person I am, I would do anything to kind of help, help anyone. So I always remember that with Mrs. Packer Bowles, as I knew her then, anything she needed help, advice, guidance with, uh, I was always happy to kind of to to do that, uh, kind of run any kind of errands, anything, um, you know, that she needed kind of help with, because she's the kind of person you want to do stuff for, you want to kind of be able to kind of help, because she's very much she gives that back. So if you ever needed advice, you never needed guidance. Um, I mean, there was many occasions that I would go to maybe to um, have a chat or to get her advice on something. And the wonderful bit is she's a very good listener, um, a very good listener, and would also give you her, her advice. And, and I remember thinking that's quite, it probably sounds a bit strange, but I thought that was quite, that's quite something special that you can have that, um, you know, especially within the first year or so, you, you build up that kind of, that kind of working relationship. And I even remember visiting her own home, which is um, not too far from Highgrove. And again, it, it, it was wonderful if you ever went to see her because she would, she would make you feel very welcome in her home as well. Even though, uh, obviously, I'm, I obviously was working for the Prince of Wales at this point, um, she was very much somebody that would make you feel, you know, if you, if you turn up, there'll be a cup of tea or a cup of coffee and, and, and that kind of thing, even if, I, even if I'd gone to kind of quickly do to take something or, you know, so that's what was so wonderful, was it was just, um, she just made you feel very much at home. One of the nicest surprises I got was when I received the invitation from the Prince of Wales and the Duchess of Cornwall to the wedding. Now, as I said before, this is a conversation for another day, but just to give you a, a little insight, I remember when I got, I got a phone call from Clarence House, 
from the then master of uh, the household. And he actually said, I don't think that was his title at, the point, at that moment, but laterally he did become the master of the household. And I remember he said to me that because I hadn't completed a, a, a full year, I wasn't automatically invited to the royal wedding. You had to have done a year. However, the Prince of Wales and the Duchess, well, the future Duchess of Cornwall, Mrs. Puggables, wanted to personally invite you to the wedding. So therefore, even though you haven't done a year, you've been invited as one of their guests. And I remember thinking that is just unbelievable. I was so excited. And, and again, it just gives you an insight into how lucky I was to have that that amazing um relationship with, with working relationship with, with both of them. And I've even got, I mean, the other thing is, I mean, that that was just something I couldn't go over. But see, the other thing I used to always think it was really nice was if it was Christmases or birthdays, she would always um, write me a little um, a little card, uh, give me a little, well, a little, she would give me a present, I say a little present, they were, they were very generous um, kind of gifts. So even though those are the kind of things I would, have, I would have got as a member of the Royal Household of the Prince of Wales. The Duchess would do the same. And I've, I've still got all these things. I, I treasure them. I keep them. Um, because to me, they're just great memories from, from that point in my life. I always remember that whenever we went to parties, the Royal We, whenever I went to any parties, whether it be at the Palace or Clarence House, St James's Palace, and I was there as a guest, the Duchess knew that I would, I was, I was somebody that got quite nervous uh, in those situations, and I still sometimes do, uh, weirdly, um, but she was aware that I would, I would kind of almost hide to kind of keep out the way, and so she would always make a point if she knew I was at something of of eventually coming around or coming to find me and checking I was okay and, and kind of having a chat. And that was just really nice because it just made you kind of feel um, kind of part of it. You know, you felt welcomed and it was almost like she's kind of there to make sure that that you're okay. I mean, she's a mother. She's got her own children. She's got Tom and Laura, which are her children from her from her previous marriage. And so I think she's got um, those kind of instincts about those kind of instincts about keeping people um, safe and making sure they're welcome and comfortable. If, if that doesn't sound too strange, um, as I say, it's a bit of a kind of mother instinct. And the reason I say that is obviously when I joined the household, I think I was about uh, twenty-five or 26 thereabouts, so, and I think I'm about the same age as her, as her son actually, around about the same age. So I think with anyone, anyone kind of the household that was maybe of my age group, um, she potentially probably just um, realised we were the same age as her, her son and, you know, with, with kind of, if she knew that there was something that made you worry or uncomfortable, she was there to listen and to give advice and that's what was, that was just such a wonderful, a wonderful thing, or it is a wonderful thing about her. One of the jobs I used to do would be to get the pop into the local news agents and get the the papers for the day, and which is a very kind of very traditional butler butler chore. We've been doing it for centuries, um, and I remember this one time going into the news agent to get uh, some papers, and the um, the lady that obviously works there started talking about one of the. The headlines, because I, th I think it was something to do with the Duchess of Cornwall. It may even been to do with the, the marriage or, or something like that. But anyway, there was something. And I always remember she was kind of very much a kind of Princess Diana fan, if I can say that. And was not exactly, um, she didn't have a lot of nice things to say, put it that way. And... I wasn't there, I mean, I never, I, I never see it as my job to try to convince people to like or dislike anyone, but some of the, the, the things that she said I felt were a little bit unfair because at the end of the day, the reality is we, we don't all know what all exactly took place. There's always two sides to a story, which is what I've always been, which I've always been taught and is an absolute fact, as I'm sure you all agree. And of course, her, her version, her view 
was was very 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 uh, I thought kind of unfair. So I remember kind of saying to her because she knew where I worked and what I did, and I, I remember saying to her, I understood what she was saying. I understood where she was coming from. But I said, what you've got to remember is there's always two sides to the story, and the Camilla Packer Bowles future Duchess of Cornwall that I know is a very kind, down to earth person. And I gave a couple of little examples about how she'd been with me and, and how, again, she made me feel very much kind of comfortable and relaxed to join the Royal Household. And it was probably a couple of days later, the, the lady in question actually said that she agreed with what I said. She obviously still, quite rightly, is um, a huge, well, was a huge fan of the late Diana Princess of Wales, quite rightly. But she said that it had made her realise that maybe she should always bear that in mind. There's always two sides to the story. And if I'm saying that she's a nice person, then that is good enough. That's good enough for her. So, which is quite, yeah, it was quite, it was quite special. Quite something that she actually, that she actually said that. And, and I thought, well, if, if, if that's some good that I can do, is just giving a, trying to, turn a, a negative into a positive or, or giving a bit of an insight to say look this is how it is it's 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 nice it's good because I think it's a bit unfair if people go around with a, a certain view or an idea of somebody because it's been put out there and sometimes they can't defend it and as you know members of the British Royal Family can't well technically don't normally kind of come out and speak out they're normally quite reserved, I'm especially the Queen for this, very reserved, very private. Um, I think the Queen famously always said, never explain, never complain, um, which again has been reported recently that she's rethinking uh, of how she phrases that. But the fact is, that's what she would always would say. So it's, as I said, it's not that I would ever have to go out and promote them or try to, to change people's views, but it's just when you've worked for them and you know them, and you know how kind they are. It is frustrating if somebody says something that's that's negative. Um, and as I said, there's always two sides to the story. And you know that that's the thing we've always got to bear in mind. That you know the, there is always two sides. And I'm not ever saying that you know every single member of the royal family does everything perfectly or anything like that because that is just not true. We know that's not true. What I'm just saying is that I've had the experience of, of working for them and looking after them. So when somebody says something about a, a certain member of the royal family that I know isn't true, or I've had a personal experience, if I think that I can kind of say something positive, then I will. So anyway, the point is, that's what took place with that little conversation. And I've seen that lady since, and she now loves the Duchess of Como because this is many years later. I mean, this is now what, maybe 17, 18 years later, and she um, she has got a lot of, of, lot of, a lot of respect for the, the Duchess and for the Prince. So I think it's true what they say about time. Time really is a great healer. Now, I'm sure a lot of you know the Duchess has got a wonderful sense of humour, and quite often I remember kind of been around her and she would get the giggles and this has been seen on countless occasions in fact I think if you even on YouTube even look up Duchess of Cornwall having the giggles you'll find there's lots of um, footage and things and that's what I, that was something I, I, I loved I, it was always quite funny if she suddenly got the giggles or you know she suddenly started laughing um, obviously there's, there's a time and a place to do this and sometimes it even I remember it would happen at official events and there's one famously when they were overseas uh, when this actually happened when she and the, the she got the giggles and the prince got the giggles and that's just it's just <laughs> for me it's fun because that's what I remember you know I remember seeing that side of her uh, you know if I especially when we were traveling or going somewhere and something funny might happen or someone might say something and she would suddenly kind of, you know, she would suddenly kind of uh, get the giggles. And as I said, that was something I was, it was great because it would suddenly kind of, you know, if you've had a long day and it's been a busy day and 
something like that kind of happens. It would make everyone suddenly kind of have a, a, a giggle or laugh along with her, and um, and see the prince kind of giggling and laughing as well. It was it was it was fantastic, really really good fun. And again, just shows you how they're just like you and me. I mean, there is occasions when we are doing something or somewhere and we'll get the giggles, and it's really difficult to stop. But well, it happens to them as well, which is as I said, it's really really nice to see. When people ask me, uh, did anything ever embarrassing or funny happen during your time with the with the Royals? Was you've heard from the other conversations? There's always been things that have happened. But I remember this one, this one occasion. It was so embarrassing for me, so embarrassing. The Duchess had three Jack Russells, really cute Jack Russells. I know people say the yappy or the bite, but the, these guys were, they were well, they had their own little characters, but they were they were they were sweet. And um, I didn't have a huge amount to do with them, actually. But, I mean, I would see them, obviously. Um, and she used to take them everywhere with her, which is fantastic. You know, obviously not on duty, I don't think. But, you know, it's very much in private. They kind of they would kind of travel with her. And, but sadly, they're, they're all, they're now sadly all gone. But I remember one day, um, one of them got out, the, out of the house um, don't quite know how, but it was kind of running around outside, and I was standing at the, on the back doorstep, and I remember um, I I thought I knew the names of the dogs. I thought I knew the names, and the Duchess Camilla Packables, Duchess Como, she shouted something, is in Colin the dog's name, and she was just behind me. Um, just in this corridor behind me and I must heard what she'd said because I said I thought I knew the names and I started shouting at the top of my voice Tossa come here Tossa and it wasn't Tossa at all it was actually um well I'm shouting Tossa and then it's there I heard the Duchess behind me going um Grant and I said yes yes your highness she'd it's actually, it's Tosca, not Tossa. And I remember thinking, I just want the ground to swallow me up. <laughs> because when I was calling her dog Tossa, instead of Tosca. Um, but thankfully she laughed. And needless to say, the, the dog thankfully came running back. Probably thankfully it came running back, because otherwise I think I'd have got more embarrassed not knowing what to, to do. But somehow I don't think it was the best thing standing, shouting, screaming out, toss it at one of her beloved dogs and those of you that animal lovers probably understand where I'm coming from so so yes that was that was a slightly embarrassing occasion but um never made that mistake again during my time with the duchess i was always amazed at you know, some of the things that she undertook, some of the, the things that she got involved in and how she managed to do it and kind of remain composed because, and, and the example I'll give you, I remember doing this um, thing at Clarence House, this presentation with the Prince and the Duchess and my role was to kind of follow the Duchess and she was presenting medals to men and ladies who had returned back from Afghanistan. Uh, I believe it was the Royal Navy. And I was walking round, uh, I say walking round, they're obviously in, in, in lines, formed in lines in the garden and the Dutch and the Prince are kind of going up and down and presenting them with the with a medal and, and saying a few words. And I'd never I don't think I'd ever done it to this point. I don't at that point I hadn't done anything quite like that, and I remember listening to their stories. I mean, these are people that have have seen the most atrocious things. I mean, they've been in the front line and and seen full on obviously combat, and it was quite something listening to their listening to their stories and what had happened to them, the things that they had seen. As the things that had, that had actually happened to them, losing limbs or 
friends and colleagues and all sorts of things. I mean, it was just, it was, it was awful listening to the stories. But I mean, so brave. I mean, these people are so, so brave. And anyway, so I was, I was walking with the Duchess as she was presenting these and one or two of the stories really upset me. And I remember starting to, um, you know, starting to kind of well up, starting to cry. Trying not, I'm trying to remain, remain composed, but I was starting to kind of well up. And the Duchess, um, you know, at one point she kind of looked at me and she said, are you okay? And I said, I'm, I'm fine, Your Highness. And she said, I, I, I know, meaning she knew that it's, it's difficult. And she kind of smiled at me and then we carried on. And I remember saying to afterwards, I thought it was amazing that because if I if I was doing that, I would probably get stuck a few in. I'd 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 probably need a, a box of tissues or something before I could carry on. And but you can see that obviously it, it does um upset them, but they're able to remain composed and dignified. And I mean, don't get me wrong, sometimes you do see them when they'll have a tear or something, but, they, but, but what I'm trying to say is they, they carry on. And, and you think it is quite amazing when you, actually, when you actually witness this kind of thing, when you're actually part of it. And I, I mean, I felt very lucky to kind of get to do those kind of things. Everybody thinks it's all, you know, about the butler, it's all about serving meals and drinks and looking after guests. But with the raw household, there was, oh, the raw family, there was occasions like that when you got to be involved in something extremely amazing and you felt very honoured and privileged uh, and to be a, to be kind of walking around with the Duchess while she was doing this, a great memory, such a, an amazing honour, an amazing honour to be in the presence of all of them as well. So, um, so yeah, as I said, it certainly pulled on the heartstrings without any question and did uh, upset me. But I was just so honoured to be able to listen to the stories and to be there to um, support the Duchess as she was presenting the, the medals. And I said all I had to do was just walk around and carry the, the, the little tray with the, the medals on it and she would then do the presentations. But it was um, wonderful, amazing, as with all, most, of these, most of these memories, absolutely amazing. One other final story I want to share with all of you to give you another insight of the Dutch of Cornwall is probably a couple of years into working for the Duchess, as well as obviously the Prince of Wales. I remember at Christmas time, I was called up to Clarence House because they were going to have some terminally ill children come to decorate the Christmas tree with the Duchess. And these are children from what's called the Helen and Douglas home, which I believe is in Oxfordshire. And it's for terminally ill children in Oxfordshire and the surrounding counties. And the Duchess invites them up to Clarence House to help her decorate the Christmas tree. And I was asked to go along to obviously assist with refreshments and that kind of thing, and also to help the children and the Duchess with decorating. The, the tree and um, I had no idea how difficult this would be now when people say to me what is the most difficult part what's one of the most difficult things you've had to do in your career this is it because while, you, while you're there doing this event you're fully aware that these wonderful children such special little souls have not got long in fact this could even have been their last Christmas and I found it really difficult. And the Duchess was amazing because, again, as a mother, she knows exactly how to how to be. And she was great with these with these children. She was absolutely amazing. And you know, just just watching her with them was just, if I can say, heartbreaking. And at one point, I found it so overwhelming, I, I, I found it so emotional that I actually went out of the room to compose myself because I'd started crying and the Duchess knew uh, and I came back in and she kind of looked at me and smiled and 
you know, kind of went to check that I was okay and she could see I, I was, you know, I was fine, but I think she knew that it was, it was, that it had obviously upset me. And we, um, we carried on with, with what was, with, I say we, the, the butlers myself carried on with what we were, with what we were doing there. And, um, I obviously made sure I, I, I composed myself so that the children wouldn't know, you know, that I was upset I, I, because that's what I'm aware of. And the Duchess is, is wonderful at this because she's so good at how she remained completely composed and wonderful throughout it. And, um, and anyway, the, 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 so the, the tree gets decorated and looks lovely and there's um, some photographs and things. And I think for the children, this is such a special occasion because for a couple of reasons. One is they're in a, a royal home. So it's like being at a, I suppose to them, in a, a palace or a castle. And the Duchess, now, even though she's a Duchess of Cornwall, she is a royal. And officially speaking, uh, as I've mentioned, that her title being the, the Duch of, Duchess of Cornwall, her other title is all obviously the Princess of Wales, which she doesn't use for obvious reasons, out of respect. But technically, um, through her marriage to the prince, same as... Uh, Kate Middleton, uh, she is a princess through name, and um, but obviously it's it's one that she doesn't use, and but for these children, this technically is like meeting a princess in a royal home, and and that is everything to them. You know, this is such a big because all these children want to be princes and princesses and. And this is them getting to kind of be with a princess in her home. And it's just so magical and wonderful to to see, to witness this. And as I said, it, it also pulls on the heartstrings because it's, it's emotional. And, you know, I had to, on that occasion, I had to very quickly kind of do the, the, the butler thing, having that stiff upper lip, you know. And what I mean by that... As I was just myself, but just don't start crying because that's obviously not going to be great for anyone. Um, and um, but it did. It, it it really did have an impact on me. And because anything to do with with children who are sick or you know who who die at such young ages really upsets me, as it probably does with everybody. Um, but I remember my late father used to take all my toys to the local hospital for this for the children that were sick. So, you know, so, and maybe it brought back those kind of memories as well. So it was, um, it really did have a, an impact on me, but the Duchess was amazing. And then as soon as the, the children have gone and it's, it's kind of finished, they've, they've gone back, back home. Um, well, actually I say back home, as soon as they've kind of left, well, obviously we, we start kind of clearing up. And I remember the Duchess at that point did check if I was okay. And I said, I was fine. And I could see she was then obviously moved by this. I could see her eyes and, you know, she was amazing because she managed to stay composed throughout it. And, and I just thought that's just, this is, this is the kind of character I want you to understand is that she's very, she's very considerate. As I, as I said, if you go to her home, she'll make you a tea or a coffee and make sure you're comfortable and offer you a chocolate biscuit or digestive and, and then the the work inside of it is is she wants to make sure everyone's comfortable and happy, um, relaxed. You know she's very caring. You know she she ticks all those boxes and and very importantly she's a great um, support to the Prince of Wales and not only a support but best friend. I mean they're best friends and the two of them have got such an amazing uh, relationship. And can I say partnership the same as the Queen and Prince Philip had the same as the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge have got Kate Middleton and Prince William, um, so it's it's wonderful to to see that and and to reassure all of you that this is this is who she is, this is what she's like, and as I said, you you see this, you've seen footage on YouTube and in the news and things, so you you have an idea of already of what what she's like, but um. But this is this is this is her. This is the real Dutch of Cornwall. And she's just um, a very kind, wonderful human being, and I feel really lucky to have, have spent time with the Duchess and around her. And and as you can tell, they're great memories that once again 
I will treasure forever. I hope you've enjoyed today's in conversation and this was thanks to all of you because in your comments you all asked a lot of you asked for this conversation so as you can tell I do read them and I do make it happen but please keep liking I'm loving the likes please keep sharing the content because that obviously keeps this little community growing and please keep commenting keep, keep giving me your ideas your views I like to know what you like, what you don't like. You know, this is this is important because it gives me ideas of what to what to create and and suggestions are always always very welcome. So, thank you. Thank you for all of it. I I really enjoy every day looking through those comments and I try every day to respond. So, so thank you. But until next Wednesday, I will see you at 5 p.m. with At Home with Thoreau Butler and then next Friday once again at 5pm I'll be back for another In Conversation with the Royal Butler. I want to thank all of you for joining me and I'm going to thank Shumba who is sound asleep on my lap. Uh, so obviously he's enjoyed this conversation. Um, shame, I think he's tired. It's, it's, hard. it's a hard life being for all dashing. But anyway, as I said, thank you for watching. Stay safe and I will see you again next week. Mm -hmm.